Our doctor, John LaPook, is a member of the hospital staff. John, what's the latest? Well, Katie, the procedure Mr. Clinton had today is one of the most common in this country. More than a million are done every year. More than five years after his first heart surgery, President Clinton developed new blockage in one of his arteries. Today, pain in his chest forced him back to New York Presbyterian Hospital Columbia in New York City. Doctors first opened his arteries with a balloon, then two stents were placed inside to keep the artery open. The goal is to restore normal blood flow to the part of the heart supplied by the blocked artery. In 2004, doctors performed a quadruple bypass. They relieved blockages in four arteries supplying his heart by using blood vessels taken from other parts of his body. After his initial surgery, the hope was that a healthy diet, exercise, and medication would prevent further blockages. I don't think I've had any junk food since my surgery. It's not uncommon for blood vessels used to relieve blockages to close up again. In fact, it happens 10 to 20 percent of the time in the first year after bypass surgery. And at six years, the number rises to at least 30 percent. William Jefferson Clinton. President Clinton has been very active since his initial surgery. He travels the world for his humanitarian foundation, spending time in Africa to fight hunger and infections like AIDS and malaria. President Clinton is the U.N. Special Envoy to Haiti and just returned from his second trip since the earthquake. The former president certainly keeps a demanding schedule, but it's not the cause of his heart problems today. So, John, how serious might this have been? Did these stents prevent him from actually having a heart attack? We don't have those kind of details, but it could have been a heart attack if the blood vessels had closed down and they weren't opened up again. The great news here is that he was only a couple of miles from the medical center. He was taken right up there, and they did the procedure very quickly. And from what, I, what it seems, they were able to open up the blocked artery. And what's his prognosis, and might there be some complications? Complications of this type of uh, surgery or procedure in a very good medical center are very low. So his prognosis is excellent. He can have some bleeding in the groin, and occasionally there are other things that can go wrong. But especially because he got in there so quickly, and it doesn't sound like he had a heart attack, so there's no permanent damage to the heart muscle. No part of the muscle died. It just had too little blood flow. And if that blood flow is able to be opened up again, then really you do pretty well, and his prognosis should be excellent. So how long will he have to stay in the hospital, John? And will he have to take it easy? As we saw, he keeps a very grueling schedule. Right. Well, I have a feeling he's going to be itching to get out sooner than the doctors want him to, but it'll be a, it should be a couple of days. And then, remember, he had a catheter put up, probably up his groin, so that'll be sore. He's going to have to take it easy for a little while. And finally, is this stenting procedure at all controversial? Because I remember reading it. It sometimes can be? It, it's gone back and forth. I mean, when I, 30 years ago, we just did coronary artery bypass surgery. This is the big operation. And then that went way over the other way to everybody opening up the blocked vessels using the stents. And now it's come back towards the middle and people are arguing about which is better. In this situation, when he, where he's had a major operation before, which can lead scarring in the chest, I think it's the most common thing that would happen now would be for them to do the angioplasty as they did and put in a stent. Especially in what seems to be an emergency situation. Right. right? All right. Dr. John LaPook, John, thanks so much.